Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind the scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. It is safe to say that most of us have heard of the Rat Pack. The Rat Pack was the toast of Hollywood back in the 50s and 60s. At the height of their appeal in the early 1960s, a reported 34,000 people flocked to the Sands Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, the seventh resort to open on the Las Vegas Strip, over a four-week period to see them perform. The Sands Hotel was torn down in 1996, and the Venetian Hotel now stands in its place. Who was the Rat Pack officially? It was a group of actors that gathered together at the Los Angeles home of actors Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. And they were christened as such when Bacall said they looked like a goddamn Rat Pack. The group was mainly made up of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford, who was also the brother-in-law to President John F. Kennedy. Many other famous faces hung out with this group, including Ava Gardner, Robert Mitchum, Elizabeth Taylor, Judy Garland, Katherine Hepburn, and Spencer Tracy. Although they might have been publicly known as the Rat Pack, they reportedly referred to themselves as the Klan or the Summit, and Frank Sinatra actually had public disdain for the Rat Pack moniker. However, other reports say that the original Rat Pack had a coat of arms, which was a rat gnawing on a human hand with the motto, Never Rat on a Rat. The group didn't just perform together, they acted together. Their first film was 1960's Ocean Eleven with Frank Sinatra in the Danny Ocean role. They also made 1962's Sergeants 3 and 1963's Four for Texas. In 1964, all but Peter Lawford gathered together to make Robin and the Seven Hoods. In addition to the movies, the group recorded five live albums together, including the Rat Pack Live at the Sands in 1960. Other fun facts about the group? When one of the members would perform in Vegas, the others were known to show up and give impromptu performances. So hotel casino marquees would tease the appearances by saying things like, Dean Martin performing, and maybe Frank, and maybe Sammy. And Dean Martin not only performed, he loved to deal blackjack at the casinos that would allow it. So, what is the connection between Ronald Reagan and the Rat Pack? Ronald Reagan was friends with Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and Joey Bishop. In fact, as governor of California, Ronald Reagan was actually the first guest on The Joey Bishop Show, which premiered April 17, 1967. And right now I understand we have uh, Governor Reagan ready to speak with us, direct from a staff meeting in Sacramento. Governor Reagan, are you there? Yes, Joey. Hi. How do you do? I'm all right, sir. Uh, I know that uh, uh, this is an imposition. I know that you, as a matter of fact, cut short the staff meeting so that you could afford us the opportunity of speaking to you as the governor of the state of California. Ronald Reagan might have been closest with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. In July of 1978, Governor Reagan joined Dean Martin for a roast of Frank Sinatra. This is Frank Sinatra's night, and I'm here out of gratitude. Frank worked for me in all my campaigns. He was with me all the way to the governor's mansion. Without his help, who knows? I might have been president. <laughs> But Frank Sinatra got him back. In 1985, during an all-star party honoring Ronald Reagan, Frank Sinatra was the evening's MC and was able to get in quite a few jokes. Tonight we honor the only man from our community who ever wound up living in public housing. <laughs> and sometime in the 1970s, Frank Sinatra gifted this game set to Ronald and Nancy Reagan for Christmas. Games include backgammon, dominoes, scrabble, darts, chess, checkers, and more. The game set remained at President and Mrs. Reagan's house until Mrs. Reagan's death, when the game set was donated to the Reagan Foundation. When we opened the game box, it even still had their most recent scorecard. In 1985, President Reagan awarded Frank Sinatra the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is an award bestowed by the President of the United States to recognize people who have made an especially meritorious contribution to the security or national interests of the United States world peace, cultural, or other significant public or private endeavors. During the ceremony, President Reagan remarked, For nearly 50 years, Americans have been putting their dreams away and letting one man take their place in our hearts. Singer, actor, humanitarian, patron of art, and mentor of artists, Francis Albert Sinatra, and his impact on America's popular culture are without peer. His love of country, his generosity toward those less fortunate, his distinctive art, and his winning and passionate 
persona make him one of our most remarkable and distinguished Americans and one who truly did it his way. Although he awarded Frank Sinatra the Presidential Medal of Freedom, he helped induct Sammy Davis Jr. into the Kennedy Center Honors, which is an annual honor given to those in the performing arts for their lifetime of contributions to American culture. Speaking of the award for Sammy Davis Jr., President Reagan said, What talent, what energy, and despite everything, what joy. It hasn't been an easy life in the early years. Especially there was bigotry and hatred, but you fought with the weapons God gave you. In our archives, we also have this clear lucite plaque with a rainbow ribbon insert commemorating the Kennedy Center Honors with a photo of all of that year's winners, including Sammy Davis Jr. Did you know that Sammy Davis Jr. first met Sinatra when Sammy Davis Jr. was only 16 years old and he was hired to open for Frank Sinatra? He's been quoted as saying, I wanted to be like him. I wanted to dress like him. I wanted to look like him. I took my hair and had it all done up Sinatra style with a little curl here and all. Now, on to Dean Martin, who was another great friend of Ronald Reagan's. You are kidding, Ronnie and me. I call him Ronnie, he calls me Deanie. But uh, just, uh, you know, in 1988, you're going to be out of work, but I'll still be drunk. <laughs> May I state, it's been great. And a night like this, a few people rage. But I must admit in all honesty, Mr. Wonderful, that's me. Their friendship dated back many years. In our archives, we have Ronald Reagan's gubernatorial inauguration invitation for his second term, which highlights the entertainment for the evening which included Dean Martin, as well as Frank Sinatra. The two not only helped at Governor Reagan's second inauguration, but they also entertained at President Reagan's second inauguration on January 19, 1985. The two brought their friendship and banter to entertain the audience. You must, I know you remember the president, by the way, you know, he's the, the most important man in the world today. Stop being so modest. <laughs> not this time, no, not this time. <laughs> The president has the power to do just about anything he wants to do. Anything? Anything. Can he turn water into wine? No, he can't do that, no. <laughs> Then what good is he? <laughs> you got a little tune you're going to lay on us now for these very good people? I'm going to lay what? A song, a tune. Oh, you mean, get it down. Get it down, boy. Oh, yeah, sure. I just, uh, any, play anything you want, anybody's music, I'll, I'll try it. Sure. In 1988, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dean Martin reunited for the Together Again National Concert Tour. But due to health issues, Dean Martin had to bow out after only six shows. Within a decade, the Rat Pack would be gone forever. Sammy Davis Jr. passed away in 1990, followed by Dean Martin in 1995, and Frank Sinatra in 1998. Peter Lawford previously passed away in 1984, and Joy Bishop passed away in 2007. It truly was the end of an era. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.